Hey guys, this is Jonathan Feist with Drone Rush, and we're coming at you from the show floor of Interdrone 2017 in Las Vegas. We're here with Unique to check out the recently released H520, a commercial drone like nothing we've seen before. We have been excited to see this drone in action since we first laid hands on it at CES 2017 in January. We finally got to see it fly, and it did a whole lot more than just leave the ground and return successfully. But I'm not the best person to tell you all about it. For that, we turn to Unique's own Douglas Spotted Eagle. I want to tell you a little bit about the, the new H520. One of the things that's great about the H520 is, is first of all, it was designed specifically for the, the enterprise space. So it really isn't designed with your hobbyist in mind, not even the high-end hobbyist. One of the things that makes it unusual, for example, is, is the, the uh, aircraft doesn't have any of the, the features that you might find in the typical consumer application. It doesn't have the, the point of interest, orbit me, or follow me, or any of those kinds of things, because those really aren't useful in the enterprise space. And really what they do is they, they kludge up or they cover up things in the interface. We wanted a very clean, very sharp interface that has only the features and, and only the tools that a, a professional field services provider would use. And so we designed this really with the FSP in mind and some specific vertical applications in mind. It was designed in great part for public safety. And so some of the features that we build into it are really designed for the public safety world. Now, for example, many public safety de departments actually have um, regulations or I should say internal requirements and operational recommendations where they can't use quadcopters. We built this as a hexcopter because what the, the hexcopter brings to the table is aside from the fact that it flies incredibly well in high winds, the system can actually allow you to even lose a prop and it'll still continue to fly. And it's not, oh my gosh, we just lost a prop, let's bring it right down to the ground. It's, we've just had a motor failure due to foreign object damage or a prop strike and we can still fly it with tremendous control. So if you're very near the end of a mission, you'll probably want to continue the mission through. So that's just one of the safety features that's built into the system. We've also built in some specific geofencing, again, that's really aimed at the enterprise user. And so we allow the enterprise user a number of different behaviors or actions whenever we run into a geofence. So, for example, maybe you're someone who's been given a Class B waiver and you have an altitude limit limitation of 75 to 150 feet, depending on, on where your B waiver authorizes you to operate. We can go in and, and you as the user can control what that altitude in that Class B airspace is. When you hit the geofence, how do you want the aircraft to behave? Do you want it to loiter? Do you want it to immediately land? Do you want it to provide a warning? Do you want it to vibrate? These are all choices that the end user has available to them inside the data pilot and the H520 total solution. Another thing that makes this fit really well into the verticals that we're operating is the fact that all of our cameras can be field switched so we've got three different payloads that can operate underneath the H520. So if you need a thermal camera that's got a, a night vision or a low light camera for surveillance or maybe you're working with crowd monitoring or perhaps you're involved in search and rescue or maybe you're dealing with fire team forensics or law enforcement forensics, the system is designed to be able to swap out cameras very, very quickly and provide a number of different miss mission flexibilities that really nobody else has. With the interchangeable payload system, it really comes down to the fact that you've got uh, one platform and multiple payloads that can go underneath it. And that saves departments not only a lot of time and, and money, but more than that, it also tr it saves on the training front because now we're not training for multiple different payloads and we're training for multiple different flight characteristics. So those are just a, a few of the features that make this particular system unique. Now, our data pilot software that uh, we've developed is very efficient, it's very lightweight, and it's very intuitive. And for inspector, inspectors, so people, for example, that are doing vertical inspections, all of the various vertical inspection companies want a very simple or efficient operation that so boils down to one or two button operations. All of that is provided for inside of Data Pilot. The Data Pilot is simply a, a one button movement once the mission has been pro programmed in. The mission can be programmed on site or the mission can be programmed remotely and then shipped to the ST16 remote unit. So either way, which, whichever way the organization wants to operate with the system, it's quite capable of fitting to just about any kind of workflow. Let's talk about output for, for just a second. 
Now many of the different payloads are designed really to give just one or maybe two different formats of output. And with our H520 system coupled with the E90 camera, you've the, uh, the number of output possibilities are myriad for all the different users that are out there. So we can shoot anything from 4K DCI all the way to standard UHD, that's 38, 40, 21, 60. And all of the processing inside the camera is 10-bit processing. And one of the things that makes this truly groundbreaking is this is the first industry camera that has been, been designed for aerial work that shoots in high efficiency video codec or HEVC. So users can choose between HEVC or the older MPEG-4 format. So it really depends on, on what that user's workflow is going to look like. If it's something that's going to be future looking and, and used in future products, we're probably going to want to shoot HEVC. If the video is going to be archived and used in legacy products, there's always the MP4 standard. We also have 20 megabit images that come out of the, the camera. Now on a one inch camera, this is very capable of operating in less than stellar light. And with an ISO of 12,800, we can take this into very, very low light situations without having to worry about noise overtaking the chroma or overtaking the, the quality of the picture. That makes it perfectly suitable for mapping in just about any kind of an environment that you might come into, but it also makes it ideal for anybody who's into broadcast journalism or cinema production. So we're uh, overall very proud of, of what we've thrown into the H520. And that's just kind of skating the surface of what the, this particular application focused UAV system can do. And why did we make it orange? Well, all it takes is just one flight into a dark bridge area or into a dark building or underneath an inspection tower or perhaps underneath a GSM platform where the aircraft immediately gets lost. You just simply can't see it, it's, it's dark. And then we have the, the white colored systems that are out there and they work pretty well in those darker environments and when they get up into the sky they become invisible very quickly and they're very hard to see. So by choosing hazard orange as a, a median point color, it's identical both in sky and, and uh, in those inspection areas and given that the FAA mandate is VLOS or visual line of sight, we wanted something that would provide people the greatest potential for visual line of sight operation. What are the internal specs of this system? So we are using a PX4 flight stack system, which is of course one of the most forward looking flight stacks that are in, in the industry today. Uh, this is a, a, a next generation of some of the other systems that are out there. So the PX4, we're able to do just amazing things with the aircraft. And this is part of why we've been able to make data pilots so very, very simple in the background, is because the aircraft is doing a lot of the thinking for the operating system. Um, one of the things I love most about the H520 is the way it does handle in very high wind environments. Now the company has set a wind limit of, of uh, 35 miles an hour, so that is the, the maximum operational uh, wind speed. However, uh, I have flown this many times in winds exceeding 50 miles per hour. Because it's a hexacopter frame and the way that the, way that the hex plan form works and the fact that the props do rotate so very closely to each other, builds a, a cushion of air that is unlike anything that any quadcopter is able to, to operate in. And with the fact that the legs come up, we have less drag in high wind environments. And that means that the platform can remain incredibly stable. Assisting that is with the legs retracted, the cushion of air, and the camera being exactly in the center, the, the center of the CG point, again, that encourages the drone or the aircraft to fly very, very stable in high wind. So this particular unit, uh, coupled with the high wind capability makes it something that most users will have no problem putting up against, say, a cellular tower, a microwave tower in 30 mile an hour winds. So be great confidence and, and have no problem flying in those kinds of environments. Uh, have we dabbled with being able to control more than drone with, with one ground station unit? No, we have not, and there's a couple of reasons. Uh, can we do it? Do we have the technology to do it? Absolutely. We certainly have the, the technology to build swarming. But with FAA regulations currently where they are and where uh, CASA regulations and CAA regulations and, and uh, Transport Canada regulations being where they are, it just doesn't really make any sense to put a lot of developmental effort into something that currently violates regulations. That certainly doesn't mean we aren't looking at forming for, for uh, future developments. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you are as excited about the unique H520 as we are. If so, make sure to hit that thumbs up button below. Be sure to visit DroneRush.com to see the full overview of this impressive commercial drone. For more drone coverage, including more to come from InterDrone 2017, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to keep in the loop. Take care all, fly safe.